So it's a brand new day. We'll start off with replacing the PCV system with all the hoses right here. So these are very common to leak. And these are the part numbers. Uh, I've so that's that's the outlet house. That's the connection right there. And well, this I'll, I'm just gonna keep. But you can see how the old one is zip tied because it's. Uh, obviously old and yeah it's not really soft anymore like this one is it's pretty hard like plastic this elbow no not this one so to replace it whole you need three pieces you need this straight piece this uh, one elbow and the other elbow and then this joiner piece and this thing this uh, accumulator of sorts so yeah let's do that yeah, I just took off this uh, little connector thing and you can see how how hard this is compared to this. This is almost like plastic. So yeah, to start off we'll just add this. No, the other, other way around. That just pushes in and connects with this tube. I mean, you can replace this, but what's the point? It's just a plastic tube. And then onto the car. So here, I already replaced this one. But unfortunately, this one was not a Mercedes OEM. This was an aftermarket part, but I mean, it's just a plastic, plastic, uh, a, a rubber connection. So what's the point? So anyway, yeah, this just pushes in there and and then this elbow just joins up right here. And that should be the PCV system leak free, hopefully. It's a terrible design, but hey, it's not, not very expensive to replace these few elbows. It was like, what, 10 euros for, 12 euros for all these parts, all these three elbows, and that's not that expensive. So here I put in this piece and I will not put this for now because I need to get access to the injector and uh, and put all the lines and everything. But I mean, from here it's just just plugs in. So that's done. On to the next one. So I, I bought a new kit for uh, a new tap set that will hopefully be easier to uh, tap the, these remaining what six six holes and then I also bought some new M8 uh, screws which probably should fit perfectly now. This is the set that I got. It's actually a set of three so you start with the one that has the least uh, sharp edges and you end up with the actual cutter. It's supposed to be to make it like easier the process of cutting a new, new thread. First time using one of these, let's try it. So this is the second tap. Based on the amount of filings that I get, it seems that it was an M7 hole. So it did this three-step method actually really helps. So three more holes to go, probably. Maybe they're tapped, maybe they're not. No, this one seems like an M7. Ta-da! That's all the threads I made now. Shouldn't be any problem to bolt up the manifold and it will hold and not have seven different bolt sizes in it. So yeah, 
on to the next thing. You know what? Fuck it. Woo! Wow. That's not metal anymore. Wow. Let's throw this big piece. Ooh. Oh, baby. Oh, that's just Swiss cheese right there. Yeah. Let's throw this piece. Ooh. Oh, that's done. Oh, that is done for. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, that's what Chinese vendors do to you. I investigated a bit and it seems that, well, although it is a Chinese made wing, um, the actual cause for it to rust like this, like in, in this spot, was because this um, SLS system reservoir, the pipe that was leading to the pump uh, was leaking pretty bad so there behind here there was clumps of sand and they were oil oil filled so probably this was keeping moisture uh, behind the fender right here because all of this was filled with sand like clumps of it and this is what caused it to rust I'm thinking because the other side is a Chinese fender as well and it's completely fine and they were put on the same time, so that probably is the likely cause here. So here's a little progress update. I installed the transmission. Uh, there wasn't really anything special about it. It just popped right up. Nothing really interfered. But to mount the transmission, so I had a 2.5, uh, I had OM602 and it was a manual transmission. It was a lot shorter, so it had this mount. And it's, uh, as you can see, so I had to get uh, a mount from a OM606 with the, so from a 124 that has an OM606 uh, and a, that has a 7 to 2.4 automatic gearbox. So this mount is shorter because, and the, that gearbox is longer itself, so it mounts further. So this is the mount that will bolt up, but you have to use the new uh, transmission uh, mount that uh, was with in the 210 because the old one uh, bolts bolts like that but the new one bolts the other way around so it bolts uh, like like right right here so I modified the new mount I got and I walled in these plates so that now I can Sit it on there, drill some holes, and then hopefully mount the transmission. So under the car here, this is the mount uh, where it where it mounts up, and this is the old style. And clearly, we have to use the the new style mount. That's what that's why I'm using it. And here you can see I already already removed here and here as well as here and here. There are plugs because my, my car originally had the mount here. So that was a larger mount that I showed previously. So remove these plugs, then this part will bolt up like so. And then the mount will just sit in there. I will little holes and that should probably be the transmission mounted. Also, not another thing, this transmission yoke, uh, it's it's bigger than that than what I had on my drive shaft, and I'm not sure if any um, one two four came with such big yoke. So what I'll do is I'll undo this nut. It's a 30 millimeter 12 pointer, and then uh, switch the the yoke from my. Uh, other transmission so that it, it will bolt up to the uh, 
drive shaft. All right, so the transmission mount is in. I had to drill the bracket mount holes a bit so I can push it like half a cent, like a centimeter forward. Here you can see it because it wasn't lining up with the mount correctly. Once I did that, I just drew uh, two holes uh, through the plates that I welded in here and uh, screwed the hole, screw, screwed the mount in, and that's it. Oh yeah, and I uh, also cleaned up this whole transmission tunnel. It was all caked on dust and and mud and everything. And uh, I will now wipe it down with some alcohol and then just spray some some form of uh, rust protection on here, so so that this bare metal doesn't continue to rust. But I mean, it's pretty decent here. So for anyone who's wondering. The drive shafts come in a few different sizes. So my car was originally a 2.5 um, manual diesel car. And this is the drive shaft that came from it. Uh, this is a drive shaft that I got from a 606 from a 124. So a naturally aspirated 606 motor. Uh, and you can see that it was also an automatic. So you can see that the two drive shafts, the one from the 606 is smaller and that's perfect because the 722.6 uh, 5 speed auto from the 210 is longer than the manual and it's also one centimeter longer than the automatic from the 124s, the 722.4. So this, this uh, from my, my manual car definitely didn't fit. It's just way too long as you can see here. And so I got this drive shaft from uh, the 606 as I told you. And then the next problem is that the uh, 72.226 uh, transmission comes with a bigger output yolk on the transmission side so it comes with this uh, I guess it's a hundred or hundred uh, I think it's hundred and ten millimeter output yolk measured uh, but both of these transmissions uh, these uh, drive shafts came with a 90 millimeter output yolk so this size which is uh, quite smaller and it's this one so you can see that yeah, th 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 there's a difference right there. And originally I wanted to just take the output yoke from my old transmission and put it on the new transmission. But it, as it turns out, the 722.6 has a bigger inner diameter and also has more splines in it than this one. So to use the uh, drive shafts from a, uh, from a 124, you have to get a 722.6 uh, yoke that comes in 90 millimeters because this is also 90 millimeters so I went out and got just that uh, you can search around the 722.6 90 millimeter yokes come from smaller uh, engines so 22 CDI's and I think 2.5 uh, turbos as well but not sure about that but it does come from the 2.2 CD, that I know for sure. So I got that, just installed it on the car. Right there, don't know if you can see that. No, you can't. Yeah. Um, also, one benefit of uh, upgrading from the 606 uh, that came, a drive shaft that came from the 124 is that it, it also has beefier splines. So if you want to, uh, so these back halves, the, the length is the same, but the splines are, are different. So you can't just take a 124.606 drive shaft and bolt it to a 2.5 diesel uh, uh, drive shaft because it, the splines here don't match up. So you have to take them as a set. Now the rear, the, uh, what was it called? The differential 
those those are those that there doesn't uh, nothing changes it's 100 millimeters oh no it's a 90 millimeter yoke there so that that stays the same but yeah the 606 drive shaft is beefier than the 2.5 which makes sense so yeah to summarize you need to have a 606 to to uh, damn it you need to have a 606 drive shaft and also if you want to keep it uh, you have to swap the end transmission yokes here let me s here you need to swap in a 722 point yoke that is 90 millimeters because this is 90 millimeters that I had but uh, it's it's from a manual holder box so it doesn't fit and theoretically now the sizes are correct the bearing stays in the same position and this yoke also say stays as it was so theoretically it all should fit now